What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another highly combustible reaction. We're going to be jumping in the next one on our Geography Now journey. Geography Now Germany. You've been screaming and ranting and raving for it. So I'm here with it. If you guys enjoyed along the way, definitely go show Geography Now Germany. Or go show Geography Now some love, not Geography Now Germany. Show Geography Now Germany a like. It'll be down inside the description as well as the original video link. Let's see what we got. Let's see. Let's learn. All right. Leader Hosen Schnitzel beer, Bratwurst order bread and beer, complicated history beer, no humor, EDM, and gummy bears that will kind of like give you diarrhea, but it's like worth it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's totally worth it for horrible. Such horrible stereotypes that every German is so sick and tired of hearing. One gummy bear? It's time to learn geography. No! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbie. So, we've conquered Belgium's castle, jumped through Denmark's lagoon, danced through France's forest, and now we've made it to the final boss of the EU, Kingpin Germany. Level 1. Germany's Begin. the kingpin. Uh-oh. Ah, you know why I'm smiling. Yep, Germany has a lot of territorial anomalies. We'll get into that in a little bit, but first. Germany is located in central western Europe, bordered by nine other countries, don't forget little Luxembourg, with small coasts on the North and Baltic Seas, which they own about 50 small islands. Now, Germany, like the US, is a federal republic which has 16 smaller states, or Bundeslande, each with its own constitution, three of which are cities, the capital Berlin, Hamburg, and Bremen, which is actually kind of like two cities, including Bremerhaven on the coast, but they kind of act like one entity. <laughs> Fun side note, Lower Saxony is actually geographically situated further north than regular Saxony. Now let's jump into the fun stuff. Now we already discussed the Jungholz Quadrapoint and the Venbahn Railway enclaves with Belgium and Austria. However, there's a few more. The entire town of Bussingen am Hochrhein is surrounded by Switzerland, whereas part of the Konstanz is cut off by the Rhine River and surrounded by Switzerland. However, immediately across the river, a small patch of empty land on the German side actually belongs to Switzerland. Finally, they split the island of Usedom with Poland in the north. Germany is interesting because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schwestlig Holsteiners. Mecklen Vorpommern will be different from Saw. This man had saying some words that sound like they came out of World of Warcraft interesting because every state in the country has its own distinct culture, dialect, history, food, traditions. I mean, Bavarians will be quite drastically different from Schwestlig Holsteiners. What's a Schwestlig Holsteiner? This all has to do with ancient and recent history. Basically, in the quickest way I can summarize this, Germanic tribes, Roman wars, Charlemagne, three kingdoms, this guy marries an Italian, creating a whole new mess called the Holy Roman Empire made up of 300 smaller separate kingdoms, states, That's a hell of a lot of smaller kingdoms. Teutonic Knights, Brandenburgs became Prussia, Habsburgs became Austrians, Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles, Nepal. I'm so glad I don't have to be taking notes for the lecture for a test. Lithuanians and Poles made their own thing, whereas the Hungarians joined the Austrians. Wars, wars, battles, battles, Napoleon comes over and messes everything up. And finally, <laughs> German nationalism surges, and in 1871, Otto von Bismarck creates the first proto-German unified state. And then they're all like, oh dang, we came late to this game. We gotta scramble for some colonies. And that's how all of these countries at one point spoke German. Oh, and also keep in mind, like 300 years before this, a German- That was quite a few countries rights to Venezuela for like 20 years. They were looking for the lost city of El Dorado. So technically, you can kind of say Germans colonized the Americas, but it wasn't like a nationalized conquest thing. Fast forward even more, and then you get World War I. The monarchy ends, Treaty of Versailles, they lose land. Nazis come in, World War II, Germany splits in two for about 40 years. And then finally, we get the Germany we have today. East Germany consisting of these states is today still quite different from the rest of Germany as it was first occupied and influenced by the Soviet Union. They are generally not as well off economically as the rest of the country as you can still see the blocky Soviet style buildings sprawled throughout the regions. In fact, the city of Berlin was split in half and the west side was actually an enclave of West Germany only accessible by train and highway. You can even see from a satellite image the divide. East Berlin still uses the yellowish tinted sulfur vapor light bulbs whereas Whoa, the west side that's uses really the cool. mercury arc white tinted light bulbs. Now the funny thing is, although Berlin is the largest city in Germany, the busiest airports are actually Frankfurt, Munich, Dusseldorf, with Berlin Tegel ranking at number four. Otherwise, some top notable landmarks and spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest. That cathedral was amazing. The spots would be the Brandenburg Gate, the Valhalla, Cologne. Whoa, baby, that's a big cathedral. I have no idea. Like back in the day, we used to build some stuff, didn't we? Some very beautiful architecture. Nowadays, we might build some weird stuff. But where's all the stonework? Where's all the bricks? Where's all the... Oh. 
Berlin Cathedral, the Ulminster Church, the tallest in the world, the Berlin Victory Column, and hundreds and hundreds of castles all over. The most notable one probably being Neuschwanstein, the concept behind Disney's Cinderella Castle. Germany also has over 400 zoos, more than any other country in the world. And of course, everybody knows 400 zoos? It's about the Autobahn, the highway system in which if you see this sign, how do you have more Zeus in America. It means there's no speed limit, and it's like that for a huge portion of the roadway. And no wonder, considering how vast and wide those cultivated countrysides can get. Time for level two. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, think of it this way. In Germany, the more down you go, the more up you move. Basically, Germany lies on the Atlantic Shelf in the north that starts with the mud flats in the North Sea. Seriously, this island right here is accessible only for a few hours by foot until the tide comes and floods everything. Then everything just kind of creeps up into the Alps in the south by Bavaria and Baden-Württemberg, with the highest mountain, Stuckspitze, located right along the border with Austria. Kind of like France, Germany is filled with a vast irrigating network of rivers like the Spree, Elbe, Vesa, Rhine, and of course, the mighty Danube that starts here. About a third of the land is arable, and another third is woodland, and after a millennia of civilization, Germans have cultivated the crap out of their country. Most agriculture, of course, happens in the north flat plains and the central regions of the country, which is, by the way, kind of like Europe's tornado alley, due to its position sandwiched between the arctic blasts of Scandinavia and the moist, warm jet streams of the Mediterranean below, Germany can be an atmospheric war zone in the summer. There are more tornadoes on average in Germany than any other country in Europe. Speaking of flat farmland, Germany is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans abso freak Freaking lutely love living in Germany like living in Tornado Alley. No thank Germany you. Is the world's largest rye and hop producer. Germans abso freaking lutely love their bread. Yeah, there are they do. There 300 different kinds of bread in the country, more types than any other country in the world, and almost every meal incorporates some kind of slice or There's a lot of food in this video so far. Are you gluten free? Nine. Germans are heavy meat eaters, specifically in pork. They basically know every possible way to cook a pig. Over 50 different types of sausage exist alongside schnitzel. Rouladen, Sauerbraten, Schweinsachse, yeah. and at a big party you might find Spanfackel. Beer. Mm, oh, this looks all delicious. This is all food. This is all real food. That green stuff is food that my food eats. This is my food. Side schnitzels, rouladen, sauerbraten, schweinsachse, and at a big party you might find Spanfackel. Beer yeah. reigns supreme all over as the third largest consumers of beer after the Czech Republic, even their president has no problem with public intoxication, and Austria. Germany is world renowned for their beer, which... I've never even been so shit-faced that I've stumbled forward like that. Even their president has no problem with public intoxication. And Austria. Germany is world-renowned for their beer, which, by the way, follows the Reinheitsgebot rule in which they are only allowed to use water, hops, malt, and sometimes yeast. None quick story about German beer. Went to Germany. Stayed in Germany for a quick visit. Was supposed to get on the airplane at noon. Showed up at 6 a.m. The only thing in the airport open was the bar. So, went to the bar. Started trying out this German beer. Went to my gate. Told the man, hey, I'm really drunk. I need to get on the next plane. Made sure he knew the number. Made sure he knew everything. He said, all right, sir. Just go rest right over there. I will get you up for your flight. I woke up two hours after my flight. Man was still there. I looked at him. He looked at me. His jaw dropped. He said, I forgot. So I ended up staying for a Brief three to four day jaunt in Germany thanks to the German beer. Nonetheless, about 1,300 breweries exist, pumping out over 5,000 brands. The oldest continuously existing brewery in the world, started by Benedictine monks in 1040 AD, can be found here. Germany takes the environment very seriously and for the past two decades has been going on a major green revolution. As of today, they have the largest installed solar power capacity and green infrastructure practices like home installed turbines and solar panels have seen a huge surge in the past 10 years. Forests dominate the southern region where the landscape gets hillier and mountainous, the most famous one being the Black Forest or the Schwarzwald in Baden-Württemberg. Deer, bears, boar, foxes, badgers, and the national animal, the eagle, can be found thriving in these parts. Nonetheless, economically, Germany is known mostly for their exceptional engineering and industry production. Companies we've all heard of like Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, Benz, Porsche, Audi, Telecom, Nivea, DHL, We've definitely Fox. all Adidas heard of- Puma! Adidas! Puma! Yeah, Adidas! Yeah, like the whole Biscoito Bolacha thing from Brazil. Remember? Well, we have mud flats, Tornadoes, pork, beer, mountains, all that's missing is people. Level three. 
Fun little side note, in Germany, this is three, not this. Now, if the EU was a family, Germany would kind of be like the dad who got out of rehab, reconciled with his wife and kids, and is taking his new life very seriously as he is haunted by the demons of his past every day. First of all, the country has about 82 million people and is the most populated in the EU, second most in Europe after Russia, and has the fourth largest nominal GDP in the world. About 80% of the country identifies as ethnically German, 12% other Europeans, mostly Polish, Italian, Dutch, and so on. Turks make up about 3.5%, Asians at 2%, and the rest are made up of other groups like Africa. Africans and Americans. Also, they use the Euro, they use the C and F type outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Germany is without a doubt a global powerhouse. It is the strongest economy in the EU and makes up about 16% of the Union's population. It's the third largest exporter and importer of goods in the world. After the United States, Germany is also the second most popular global migration destination. Germany we did used to get a lot of German containers in it, our old paint company on the backs of trucks, 100%. It experiences a high standard of living, tuition-free universities, if you get accepted, that is, a Mostly government subsidized universal healthcare system, about a quarter is still privatized, and state pension for retirement at age 65. Now, when it comes to language, things get a little tricky. Each state kind of has their own type of German. However, to get by, most Germans learn how to speak Hochdeutsch or High German, which is the standard dialect. The European Charter, however, protects the minority languages of Frisian, Danish, Romani, Sorbian, which is like a Slavic based language used along the Czech Polish border, and Plattdeutsch or Low German, which has similarities to Dutch and is typically used by the Amish and Mennonite communities across the world. In terms of Regional distinctions, though, Germany is kind of divided into five cultural areas. Rhineland, East and Middle Deutschland, North Deutschland, Baden-Württemberg, and Bavaria. Rhineland is on the west side and has a culture somewhat more influenced That's a by badass France, castle. Catholics. Carnival celebrations are huge out here. East and Middle Germany was the part that used to be its own country for 40 years as it was influenced by the Soviets. Sorbians can also be found here, too. Northern Germany has a coast... I thought they says, what is a Sorbian? Where is the Sorbian from? Sorbia. 40 years. I didn't even know there was a country named Sorbia. As it was influenced by the Soviets. What Sorbian is a Sorbian? Sorbian? Found here too. Northern Germany has a coastal sea culture that I gotta Google that. Denmark and the Netherlands. They're also known for being kind of quiet and reserved. Baden-Württemberg has an interesting Swabian culture where they speak a dialect so thick that only about 40% of it is intelligible to other Germans. And then you have Bavaria, which Good is where nuts. the Americanized, perpetuated stereotypes about Germany came from with Lederhosen, Dirndls, Half Timber, Beer Houses, and Cuckoo Clocks. For I'm one of those people that does not like the leader hosen i'm just saying i despise that outfit and i know people out there are gonna hate me for it some some people are but it's just Oktoberfest has killed the Lederhosen. For the record, Germans are sick of those stereotypes it's like saying all americans are cowboys with guns and horses speaking of stereotypes I mean, we don't have horses. Some of the stereotypes in Germany include things like Saxons being very indecisive, Berliners are always bragging about themselves, Swabians are stingy, Bavarians drink too much, Hessians talk too much, Holsteiners don't talk enough, and so on. Words differ from regions too. For example, in High German, you would say Auf Wiedersehen, but in Bavarian, you would say Fiat die Gott. In how in the that's not even the same at all nearly the same not even that's totally two different things Kulsch, you would say choose and in rhineland you might say ayus and there's so many compound words to get really long and complicated like how long did it take him to learn how to say that he said that pretty flawlessly. Long and Let me see if like there was any cuts in that. This is because many words are mertudig, or ambiguous words that are kind of elongated to give off an extensive meaning. Germans have very vivid imaginations and make up words for everything. Like my favorite word, Backpfeifengesicht. Not this time. By the way, for the record, this letter makes a double S sound. However, spelling reformers have tried to decrease the usage of this letter in recent years, which has led to some protests. Germans also love dubbing everything thing from foreign media into German. Some like this, some don't, but either way, it's here to stay. About 60% of the country identifies at least nominally as Christians, split between Protestants and Catholics. Germany was even the birthplace of the Protestant Reformation, split from the Catholic Church by Martin Luther. Otherwise, the rest are mostly agnostic or irreligious, with a noticeable community of Muslims, mostly from the huge Turkish and Middle Eastern communities, at about 5%, as well as a few Jews, Buddhists, and Hindus rounding up the remainder 1%. To kind of get a feel of what it's like to be German, you kind of have to understand where they've come from. After World War to, they kind of had a lot of work to do. However, it wasn't until the mid 50s and early 60s that the Wirtschaftswunder or economic wonder happened to which almost everybody got to work. Basically, this guy envisioned and implemented a social market economy combined with free market capitalism alongside socialist policies that established fair competition in a welfare state. GDP increased by 80%, investments by 120%, labor forces were utilized to the maximum. Everything's on the up and up. In Germany, all children are corralled into general public schools until age 10 
when they are given the option to enroll in three different types of middle schools. Gymnasium, geared towards focusing on higher linguistic, mathematic, and science fields for universities. Realschule, a middle ground type of school. And Hauptschule, a school that is geared towards helping kids that seem to show promise in specific... That is genius. I like that idea a lot. Why teach kids stuff that they don't need to know for their jobs? Why make them proficient in a bunch of things that they will never need to be proficient at? If somebody wants to do a certain type of thing, figure out what your kid likes to do and let them do it. Like, this is awesome. Figure out which way in life you want to go. This would have had me trying to figure out what the hell I wanted to be a lot sooner than graduating high school. Specific vocation or trade. That's Germany very also has cool. the largest music market in the EU and the third in the world after the US and Japan. They love preserving their heritage and culture through music and art. In fact, there are around 130 national orchestras mostly supported by public money. And artists get a 50% reduction in health insurance through a special type of offer in the legal system. One thing wow. that still kind of supposedly maintains itself in Germany is the mindset of Vergangenheitsbewältigung. Totally butchered that! Which kind of translates to a lingering sense of guilt from the past. Germans have reportedly some of the lowest levels of national pride, and unless if you're at a soccer game, chances are you will almost never see anyone holding a German flag or waving it in any kind of like patriotic setting. It's weird, but it's kind of how things are. That's you bizarre. Monster. They've made great strides to move on from the past. Nazi flags and Mein Kampf are incredibly illegal items to own in Germany, and they even have a rule, the Volkswertzung, which basically says you cannot talk trash by denying the past atrocities. Some people say this infringes on free speech, others say it's good because it solidifies Truth. Otherwise, some notable Germans throughout history. Include I can Charlene, see the. I can see Frank, the back and forth there. Accounts. Albrecht, Dürer, David Friedrich, Gutenberg, Bach, Beethoven, Carl Benz, Albert Einstein. Although Americans would like to claim that he moved to the U.S. and became an American. Johannes Kepler, Johann yeah, Wolfgang they would. von Goethe, Friedrich Schiller, Michael Schumacher, Alex von Humboldt, and of course Karl Marx and Friedrich Engels co-founded Marxism. <laughs> <clears throat> but one thing Germans do best would have to be diplomacy. To this day, the German passport holds the most visa-free nations out of any other country wow. in the world, just beating Sweden. Therefore, you can kind of conclude that Germany kind of knows how to relate to people. Let's find out how in the final round, level four. Germany knows how to make friends. They have over 220 diplomatic missions abroad and over 350 honorary consuls and have an incredibly high position of authority in the EU. Their closest African friend would probably be Namibia. As a former German colony way back in the 19th century, Namibia held on relations and to this day, German is still a recognized language in Namibia. Germans have been supporting and sharing ties both economically and ideologically for over a century. India and South Korea are really close friends in Asia. India supported both East and West Germany during the Cold War and after reunification, they were like, woohoo! Even better! And Germany is to South Korea what Japan is to France. They love to piggyback off of each other's ideas and cultures, especially in the automotive industry. Many South Koreans were sent to Germany after the Korean War to work abroad and study, and Germans have been growing in fascination with visiting South Korea. The US is probably the closest ally outside of the EU. About 30% of Americans claim German heritage, and after World War II, the Marshall Plan allowed the US to give post-war aid to Germany, which helped kickstart the economic recovery. Germany was a key figure in the formation of the State of Israel after World War II, which after the Holocaust left an obligation to invest in the building up of a Jewish community. Turkey is probably the closest Middle Eastern ally as the Turks make up the largest Asian demographic in Germany, although many of them may or may not also identify as Kurds. But since Kurds don't have a state of their own, they usually go under Turkish passports when immigrating and are documented as such. Their best friends, however, would probably be literally mind blowing a wealth of information. It's kind of like Bosnia and Herzegovina, in which by default they kind of get friends based off of the regional alliances. Bavarians get along with Austrians, Baden Württembergs get along with. Switzerland, East Germany has good relations with the Slavic countries, the Rhine states love- It makes sense that you would want to have good relations with your closest border at, uh, border people. Of Belgium, Luxembourg, and France, and the North side loves the Netherlands and Denmark. France though is kind of like the trophy wife of Germany, as the two have had an angry start, but then eventually fell in love and worked together beautifully. France is like the beautiful flashy spokesperson for the EU that stands in the spotlight as Germany stands in the background, managing all the money and logistical work. In conclusion, although Germanic peoples have existed for thousands of years, an actual unified German state didn't appear until kind of recently, and the brief time that they've been around, they've kind of gone through some of the most intense, world revolutionizing historical events possibly imagined. Yet, they've come out working hard and building their way up to become a world superpower. You gotta give it to them. There's something about the Germans. And with that, final boss level complete. Stay tuned, another African state Germany has ties to, Ghana, is coming up next. Oh. I'm most certainly glad that I didn't have to take notes. I'm glad there's no pop quiz.
and most certainly go over show geography now some love legit a wealth of information they are they dig through they do their research to get a lot of things right the things that they end up getting wrong they go back and they correct in their fan flag fridays like legitimate respectful way to tour the world without ha being able to tour the world uh some people don't ever get that chance right now nobody really kind of has that chance so it's kind of cool to be able to virtually get out there learn a little bit something so that i can educate myself a little bit more about the places that you come from if you guys enjoyed it go show them some love hit the like button here if you liked it the dislike button if you disliked it check out the other video up there or one of these guys up here until the next one highly combustible you guys be happy healthy safe but let me to the moon and back peace